Wages and wage expectations are at their highest level in 10 years. That's according to new data from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The average wage of those surveyed is more than $79,000, nearly 5% higher than a year ago. And the average wage expectation for those expecting new job offers is more than $67,000, up 11% from last July. Joining us now to discuss the state of wages and the labor market is Julia Pollock, chief economist for ZipRecruiter. It's good to be with you. What's behind the increase in wages and this sense of expectation? Is it just catching up with inflation, dealing with inflation, or are there other forces at play? Well, there are two key factors. One is that the labor market is still incredibly tight with unemployment near its 50-year low at just 3.5%. And in many states, it's at around 1.8%. And the other factor, yes, is inflation. Uh, wage growth does track inflation. Had there not been this huge explosion in inflation since the pandemic, prices would have risen just about 7%. Instead, they're up 17.5%. And workers feel that. They notice it when they go to the store. They put gas in the tank or they try to rent an apartment. Uh, wages usually grow faster than inflation to account for productivity growth. But on average, wages have just grown as fast as inflation. And so uh, real wages adjusted for inflation are below their pre-pandemic trend. And is that, does, does that explain for you why, despite the increase in wages, you nevertheless, in our most recent poll, have 65% of the people surveyed felt that the condition of the economy was bad. Does that track with you? In other words, their wages are up, but relative to inflation, they're not purchasing what they could before. That's exactly right. So employers feel as though they've given these enormous nominal wage increases, 18%, 27% in restaurants for non-managers. Uh, those are huge numbers. And yet workers feel as though they've received nothing, as though they've uh, actually fallen behind because uh, in inflation-adjusted terms, so many have. Uh, that tension will continue to play out, and we're seeing it in strikes and labor disputes around the country uh, as employers and, and workers are, are butting heads. Uh, in some cases, they're, you know, they're finding a happy medium. They are coming, reaching agreements uh, and, and casting those as a win-win that will help them recruit talent and retain workers and, and move forward. Julia, the New York Fed also found that men with new job offers we're expecting $23,000 more than women were expecting. Without editorializing on my part, what do you make of that? <laughs> Well, the gender wage gap is actually the narrowest that it's ever been at uh, women earning 84% on average, as much as men do. And yet women only expect to earn about 73% as much as men do. And I think there are several reasons for this. One is that in the highest paying occupations, women are still a minority often. And so sometimes they just lack information about the going rate. Uh, a recent study found that in an, a freelancer platform of engineers, women uh, bid far less on jobs than, than equally qualified men did. But when that platform introduced new information and told them what the average bid was, what employers were prepared to pay for that kind of job, they actually responded by adjusting their bids upwards and the gender pay gap disappeared entirely. So there's a role here for employers to be more transparent and also for marketplaces like ZipRecruiter, where I work, uh, to provide more information. And we're doing that now. We're showing uh, workers what we think uh, wages for those jobs uh, on, in our marketplace uh, are. Ah, so get the information. Now, quickly, if it's possible, Fed Chair Jerome Powell has said that before the central bank stops raising rates, he wants to see labor demand to be better balanced with labor supply. How close are, are we to that? So, you know, I think the most important thing that the Fed is going to track is not uh, any labor market uh, indicator, but inflation itself. And inflation is coming down meaningfully. Uh, you know, it, inflation is always and everywhere uh, an issue of services and, and wages, uh, even before the pandemic. Uh, Services were, were growing in cost at more than 2% a year. Uh, hospital services, insurance, uh, college tuition, you name it. Uh, goods were, were falling in price. Uh, you know, TVs keep getting cheaper, uh, but services and labor costs keep going up. That is the norm, and uh, it's not something that's likely to turn around anytime soon.
Julia Pollack, Chief Economist for ZipRecruiter. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much.